Welcome to my reading corner, and I'm going to review Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. I like this book. I thought it was really good. Um, it was very interesting read. Very, and it kind of made me sad as well as I was reading it. And it's also a very quick read. I feel like unless you just weren't completely bored with it, then maybe it won't be a quick read for you. Um, this is a story about. This flu virus, the Georgia flu, that wipes out the whole world, the whole, most of the world, most of the human population. And you have three survive. you have, not three survivors, you have um, three main characters. Kirsten, who was part of an acting troupe that was performing King Lear when the Georgia flu hit. And you have Clark, who is this guy who ends up creating a museum for all the things, the old technology and all the old memorabilia of before the flu wiped out everybody. And then you have Jeevan, who he ends up hiding out in a town that is able to, has discovered how to recreate electricity. Now, in the story, um, Kirsten, like I said, she's part of an acting troupe, and in the future, in this post-apocalyptic world, she joins a traveling tr acting troupe known as the Symph Symphony, who puts on Shakespeare plays to show the world, to remind the world of some of the more artistic things and the beautiful things that have lost the world. And so what links these three main characters together is not only are we getting their stories of how they survived, but also they were all connected to this gentleman, this actor who played the lead in King Lear, who they all witnessed his, him having a heart attack on stage. Clark was his college best friend. Um, Jeevan was the paramedic who tried to save his life. And Kirsten played a younger version of his daughter. And we go back, like I said, we go back and forth. We get the, we um, see the, we get the story of these people in the present and their situation, how they're surviving, what they're, what they're doing now, and how their lives are going and everything. And um, we also get a little bit of the past as well. We see their past and the, what they were doing right before the, before the flu wiped everybody out and killed everybody. Now we also have um, in the story, there's a plot about this, the um, traveling symphon symphony runs into a town called St. Deborah, where by the water, where they encounter this very dangerous and religious zealot known as the Prophet. And when they, as they are leaving, because they realize, okay, it's not safe to stay here, this guy is dangerous. One of the, one, this little preteen girl stows away on their, one of their, tra on their traveling caravan because she is going to, because the Prophet believed was going to make her one of his wives. So he ends up kidnapping two of their members of the symphony, and it's about Kirsten and her friend August, after they get separated from the symphony, traveling to this city where the museum that Clark runs is located. So, and, like I said, this was a good book. I, I, I liked it. I didn't, you know, I enjoyed it. I wasn't, I wasn't wowed by it. But I did like it, and I do want to read more stories like this, which I am. Because the reason why I read this, I finally got around to reading this book, is because I'm currently reading *The Stand* by Stephen King, which is much longer than this one. Um, but Natasha, for my reading, is odd, as I mentioned in my my updates of my Stephen King project, has said has felt like she compared *The Stand* in this book. Um, together because they are very similar because the sand is also about a flu wiping out the whole human population. I think it was mostly the United States, but it might, I don't remember, I haven't got, I don't remember if they said that it affected the whole world. But I think it's just the United States in that case. But in that one, it kind of focuses, we're slowly seeing how it has slowly killed everybody in the sand. We haven't even got to, because it's also a book about, um, kind of is a book that delves into good versus evil. Um, and I feel like Stephen King spends even more time on his characters and establishing their backstories. 
and getting us introducing us to them and helping us get to know them. Um, while this story, we do get to know the characters, but the author, Emily St. John Mandel, does not spend as much time developing her characters. I mean, there is good character development, but we don't get as much background on the characters. We just get the information that was a few weeks before the flu hit. Now, my only thing, my only issue with this book is that I was kind of disappointed with the antagonist, with the prophet. Like, the back of the book makes it seem like he's such a big threat, a big ominous threat, and very dangerous. But I feel like you don't get much of his character. Like, and, okay, I'm going to spoil, so I'm going to hold up the book. Um... But we, I feel like it was a big letdown when he, after what happened to the prophet. Um, that was a bit of a disappointment. Now this is very much a character driven piece and I think it's considered a literary fiction. So maybe, maybe that's just how literary fiction is. But my door is totally fine. I just opened Um, but yeah, I was very disappointed with it because I thought that the prophet would be a bigger, more of a threat, more involved in the story, and I feel like he wasn't. I mean, I mean, not that he, he wasn't not, like, he was involved, but he wasn't, he didn't play that much of a role. And again, maybe because I'm so used to, like, fantasy and sci-fi and, like, and horror and stuff where you, like, where the villain or the antagonist is there throughout the story. Like, physically and, you know, metaphorically. Like, you either he is physically interacting with our main characters, or, like, you see what's going on with him or her. You know, you see what they're doing. And we don't spend any time with him, except for when the traveling symphony gets to the gets St. Deborah by the water. And when he shows up towards the end of the story. But, I mean, this was, of course, this was, like I said, it was a character-driven piece. And it was mostly about these people and how they survive the apocalypse and how and the aftermath and how they deal with it and how it affects them. So maybe, you know, so like I said, maybe I was, I was, I just was expecting a little bit more with the prophet. Like, more involvement. Other than that... The book was good. Like I said, it wasn't wow, but it was good. It was very entertaining. It was a very fun book. You know, and it's not that long to read. So, you know, I mean, it is 55 chapters, but some of the chapters are basically like a half a paragraph. Like, so, um, or only a few pages. I mean, some pages, some chapters are a little bit longer than others, but still, I feel like it's still very fast-paced. I mean, it's slow-moving, but it's also fast-paced, if that makes any sense. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. Like, I like the characters. You know, I like, it was very, the writing was not too flowery or it was just straight to the point because I mean the story feel, I feel like the story doesn't call for flowery writing um and it wasn't necessarily the worst um I like like I said I like the characters you know I was disappointed by the prophet I mean I feel I, mean, I feel like they could have done a lot more Especially with the whole religious salient thing and being like, I'm killing people or torturing people in the name of God. You know, I feel like they could have done more with that. Made him a little more scary. Like, you know, you believe in me who does believe in God and is a religious person. Although, I mean, although I don't consider myself religious. I consider myself spiritual. Um, but... Either way, I think they could have done more with his character, made him a little bit more scary. Like I said, it was well written. Um, 
mean, again, I just don't know what else to say. I, like I said, I'm still not very good at these reviews, but I want to keep practicing so I'll get better. Like I said, I feel like I need to get into the, I really do need to get in the habit of just writing down my review so that I have something to refer to so there will be less stumbling when I get these reviews. Um, at least just take notes. Again, I don't like taking notes while I'm reading, but I don't, I'll t I can take notes after, right after I finish reading the book. So, um, those are my thoughts, and that's my review of, um, of Station Love. I give it four stars on Goodreads. I think it's worth a read. You know, I mean, but to each their own if you like it, if you don't like it. That's fine. Um, not pressuring you guys to read. I'm just personally saying I think you know it's worth checking out if you haven't already. Um, so if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and click subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I hope you are enjoying your reading, and I will talk to you all later. All right, bye.